art for the people? Uh, art, art's a vehicle for transcendence, and uh, artists always experience that transcendence, and it's amazing. And once you would experience it, you want to share that with others. And so I think automatically it becomes uh, an activity that becomes communal. But in a way it's unfair because you want to do art for the people and the reaction in Paris was very aggressive. What's your response to that? I think there was some misunderstanding, but the intentions from the very beginning of the what the work was going to be about, the idea about the work, starting with Ambassador Jane Hartley to, to create a work that would show our solidarity with the French people, the values that we share, uh, that were there for uh, the French people after the horrific attacks that took place in 2015-16. Uh, to be able to, to create that work and to be able to make something to communicate with the French people is it's beyond feeling anything from any controversies because the end to, to, to achieve that, to have an opportunity for that dialogue is what's meaningful. But uh, it, uh, it probably has been painful, no? Uh, you know, not uh, controversies aren't always nice. There was a lot of misunderstanding. Uh, people would write, uh, they had a misunderstanding of the scale of the piece. Uh, they had a misunderstanding. They thought that I chose the location. Uh, the location was offered to me. I never uh, went around the city and said, I want to put the work here. Yeah. But uh, the location was offered, and uh, I uh, chose originally Plaza de Tokyo. There was no controversy for, I guess, until about a year and a half. But when the controversy started and uh, another location uh, or other locations were shown to me. Eventually, uh, I was shown this location, and this is ideal. It's absolutely wonderful. I could not be happier. And for me, you know, the joy was always to realize a piece, to share and communicate with the French people. Um, dimension. How did you decide of the dimension of the piece? Because it's huge. You know, uh, Plato will always, would always say that the first thing that you deal with in art is scale. And so I wanted to make a, a piece that, you know, has uh, a certain quality, a certain power uh, to it, that it's on uh, a, a public level, but not too overwhelming. And I also use the scale of uh, Bartholdi's Statue of Liberty. I'm just slightly larger, but I'm very close to the actual scale, ah. just a little larger. Okay. And the, the gesture, the angles, uh, the fingers aren't exactly in the same position, but very, very similar uh, to represent uh, offering. The hand. You have never done something as realistic as that. Huh? This hand. Uh, I've always have, uh, paid a lot of attention to details because details are a way to show the viewer that you care about them, you respect them, and the details almost a metaphor to show them uh, respect. But I've also always have been curious in ancient times how everything was always polychromed. And we forgot. Yeah, everything was painted. So, uh, you know, in the past, uh, uh, all public sculptures would have been uh, uh, painted in kind of a similar manner. Uh, the Petit Palais would have been painted similar to the sculpture. <laughs> but, but to be able to have a dialogue with the, uh, the ancient past, with the uh, yeah. archaic times, because what's the information that's carried within the work uh, comes from our history, our uh, history of, uh, of uh, being civilized uh, societies and uh, knowing that together that uh, two people together are more powerful than being uh, individuals that, uh, can we speak about the balloon the idea of the balloon uh, a balloon uh, we're similar to a balloon uh, when we take a deep breath we inflate with air 
it's a symbol of optimism, life's energy. And when we deflate, it's a symbol of, of, of passing, of death. And, uh, and it's also, it's a membrane. And you have a dialogue with inside and outside, really at the kind of the core of contemplation and, and transcendence, to think about your internal life and how you affect the external world and how the external world affects your internal body. So as a membrane, as a membrane, it uh, it carries this profoundness of what it means to be human. But it's vanity too, contemporary vanity in a way. You invented a vocabulary about contemporary vanity, right? Don't you think? I don't know. I never thought of I never thought about vanity at all. The idea of gift. In fact, part of the misunderstanding was about the fact that you gave the concept of the work, right? At the beginning. Could you explain? It was interpreted of uh, uh, giving the concept, but, uh, you know, I was asked if I would uh, want to make a work. I said I'd make a work. I was told that they would have donors be able to contribute to the production of the work. And uh, I didn't think anything about it because it's really quite a traditional way of making something for a public sculpture and to give the public sculpture. Picasso in uh, Chicago uh, gave the design to the city. Oh, and really? They, they paid for the production of it for uh, the Statue of Liberty. And, I don't know all the details there, but it was a gift. I know that the American people paid for the base and other uh, people paid for the production of, of the piece. So, uh, you know, I gave of my time. I gave of all of my staff. I never received any fee in any manner or any reimbursement for uh, my production, my uh, studio's production. And uh, then there were overrides on the piece. It cost more to manufacture. And so, financially, uh, really a very uh, sizable amount, substantial amount. And I've also given the, uh, the copyright of the work, uh, all the future uh, royalties of the work to the families, and 80% to the families, uh, and 20% uh, to the, the maintenance of the work to the city. I was surprised by uh, uh, the controversy because it was, it was created like just creating an idea and that's the only attention. I gave this work three years of my life, I mean, a tremendous amount of attention and overseeing the, the scanning of, uh, of the hands and which hand are we going to use and then the position of the balloons. And what so what is the end? Who, who, who does the end belong to? It's yours, right? No, it's not my hand. It, it belonged to uh, one of the assistants that I had. And uh, it was a, a young woman's hand in her mid-20s. Uh -huh. And uh, I wanted the hand to have some aspect of youth, but not to be too young, but that there's a sense of facing the future. And uh, but symbolically, it's your hand giving these flowers to Paris, no? So it's the, the American people giving their hand to the French, and in return, it's the French hand giving to America. It's universal. It really represents uh, a universal act of offering, a humankind offering. Twelve. What about twelve? Twelve. And eleven, in fact. Uh, 12 represents a complete set, a dozen, and uh, 11 represents uh, that it's not a complete set, it never will be a complete set, and uh, a dozen is uh, quite universal as a set, of something being representing complete or full. So the work always has that sense of loss. Uh, a sense of history, but uh, behind uh, the bouquet of tulips is really this driving force of offering, and that in life, to be able to offer to someone becomes really like the highest idea that you can have, is to offer your support to someone, to offer your being to someone, to offer the solidarity. And the French and the American uh, 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 people 
we've had this solidarity for centuries. And, uh, next dream. What is your next dream? Uh, to continue just to celebrate art. And uh, it's amazing. I have young children, and I can see my uh, children that are seven and nine, their involvement in art and all the possibility, all the enlightenment that they're experiencing through art and they continue that joy. And yeah. balloon is also linked to your kids? It's the universe of your kids? Uh, I, I think the balloon is linked to Duchamp's uh, Parisian air. Ah. It's, uh, it's linked, it's, uh, it's linked to, to breathing inside, outside, really the basics of philosophy and what it means to, to be alive and to have an understanding of your environment and how you affect your environment, how it affects you, really the basis of philosophy. It's about meditation. You meditate and breathe. To be quiet in front of controversies? Uh, I think that uh, the way I think about my art and I let things resonate, ideas resonate, it's a form of meditation. Mm. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Man.